Thank you, President. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to encourage a lively debate, in part because it's in the afternoon. 3 to 5.30 is a difficult time to have an invigorating conversation. I was also encouraged uh, by my presenters and reviewers to have a few jokes on standby, so I will cue those up uh, to ensure a lot of the conversation. For those of you who attended the morning discussion, there were some quality, conver quality conversations and quality questions that came from the audience, but an insufficient number, in my view. So I'd like to encourage all of you, as you hear the presentations, hear the reviews, to cue up some questions so that we can have a lively conversation in the 4.30, 5 o'clock hour, which will be an important hour. I just want to review why we're here. The National Voluntary Presentations do the following three things. Assess progress towards achieving the UN development agenda at the national level. Generate momentum for scaling up and accelerating action to realize the agenda. And perhaps most importantly, serve as a forum to exchange lessons learned and successful practices and improve implementation of development strategies and policies. This is the first year where you're seeing several NVPs, National Voluntary Presentations, at once. In previous years, as you know, it was a single presentation, and then they stood down, and another MVP stood up. The purpose of this is to encourage collective lessons learned, best practices, that kind of sharing. So the Q&A is going to be very important for your feedback, perhaps your own lessons learned that you can offer up Qatar, Kuwait, and the United Kingdom. This is a process. This isn't a one-time presentation. Uh, I would like to frame a, a few things that I think are important very quickly before I pass it off to the first presentation. The Millennium Development Goals are more than just the MDGs. The, you all know them, I don't need to repeat them, but I would like a consideration of the following, that meeting the MDGs by 2015 and keeping in mind the transition to the Sustainable Development Goals post-2015 is more than just a meritorious effort to educate, provide health, eradicate poverty, and the list goes on. But there is a strong correlation between the indicators in the MDGs and the indicators that will be in the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, and peacefulness. I have done a lot of work on the Global Peace Index and have moderated panels here in the UN on the Global Peace Index. I also do a lot of work on the Just Jobs Index. And anyone who's involved in the work of preventing violent conflict knows full well that the data and the indicators in the MDGs and subsequently in the SDGs, are vital to and correlate strongly with peaceful societies or more violent societies. So this effort is an effort also to prevent violent conflict. Where I teach at George Mason University School for Conflict Analysis and Resolution, we look heavily at this data, and I want that to be part of the consideration. I'd like to offer up two more things, too, that should be a part of today's conversation. And I come from Washington, DC. I used to work in Congress for many years. Political and public will to get behind the MDGs and going forward the SDGs is absolutely vital in every one of our countries. In America, the MDGs, I would argue, were previously considered something far afield from America's political agenda, and the public probably didn't know much about it, or if you mention the MDGs, they thought of some poor country somewhere. They didn't think of America. They didn't think of the United States. The SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, and I would like today's conversation to talk about how we transition to those, is absolutely a U.S. agenda, as much as it is a Qatar agenda, a Kuwait agenda, UK agenda for the presenters today. And how do we build the necessary political and public will to really support these agendas going forward? Otherwise, they will fail. In the U.S., this is particularly an important issue when we think of foreign aid which public support for foreign aid goes up and down, oftentimes depending on our economic situation. The more unemployed we have in America, the less support for foreign aid. So how do we get the American public behind the SDGs? And that's a conversation I want all of us to have. Secondly, climate change and global warming is going to impact these goals, is already impacting these goals, but going forward, even more so is going to impact these goals as countries are running out of water. The violence in Iraq, Yemen running out of water. These issues have to be faced within a climate change agenda. And as we think about the Sustainable Development Goals and climate change impact on those and even the MDGs, let's have that be a part of the conversation. As well as other security threats like state-sponsored terrorism or terrorism by non-state actors where these MDGs are not being met. Again, the correlation strongly with violence. I want that very much to be a part of the conversation. Okay, so today's conversation goes like this. 
Each presenter, we'll start with Qatar, each presenter gets 15 minutes, and then there will be a review by two reviewers, each reviewer having five minutes to review the presenter's presentation. So we'll start with Qatar. Qatar will be reviewed by Kuwait and Malaysia, followed by the United Kingdom, will be reviewed by Ethiopia and Pakistan, followed by Kuwait, will be reviewed by Kazakhstan and Qatar. So again, 15 minutes for each presentation, and then each reviewer gets five minutes, and I'm asking as the moderator that everyone sticks to those minutes so that we can have a lively conversation afterwards. So to begin, I'd like to introduce, as the President already mentioned from Qatar, His Excellency Mr. Saleh bin Mohammed Al-Nabit, Minister of Development, Planning and Statistics from the State of Qatar. The floor is yours. <laughs> 